Hello and welcome to another drive-in double feature. I'm Ryan. I'm Nathan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week, every Tuesday and Thursday. But before I get into anything, we have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash driving double feature podcast. You know, people come up to me. It's like, I got $5. What, what the hell am I going to spend $5 on? I said, Hey, you give me that $5. You're going to hear the most exclusive content you've ever heard. It's I, I I'd say it's worth $5. I mean, I I, think so. I pay for $5 to listen to myself talk about movies. Okay. Yeah. I would pay (laughs) to be able to pay for me to listen to me talking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, The entrance fee to pay for this. I would, I would pay my internet service provider an extra $5 a month just to have the privilege to do that. Yeah. Oh, do do you want the DIDF Patreon with your package? That's what they always ask. Yeah. 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 it, it's a it's a nice bundle deal you'll like it but anyway uh it's very exclusive over there we have some bonus episodes it doesn't affect any regular content whatsoever but today we are getting back into the gamma side of things and we're talking about 1969's gamma versus Yuron. and uh, that one is once again directed by mr yuasa he's back yeah hey good for him yeah, he is back once again, and uh, it is even tighter on the purse strings over there at Daiye Studios. You know, mm-hmm. I now if you just to give you an idea, so uh, Baragon um, was filmed. Barugon, excuse me. Baragon was had a budget of over eighty million yen. Mm-hmm. This one. Had a budget of 24 million yen, which is about the equivalent of, I think they said about $800,000, something like that, or it's like less than a million dollars, not much. Okay. And and just to give you an idea, that's half of the budget of the original movie too. Like, which is already which, kind of a low budget movie. Yeah. So it's like, things aren't looking so good for Dye. Um, the threats of uh, bankruptcy are looming in the air right now. And it is not looking good because uh, movies are not nearly as profitable right now. And TV is becoming to be a much more prevalent thing in Japanese culture. So people aren't going to the movies as often as they used to. And this is around the same time we actually had uh, Godzilla's revenge or uh, all monsters attack. Oh, okay. So, so, just to give you an idea, like people are definitely seeing some like fatigue a little bit and on mm-hmm. <laughs> the side of things. Um, this one though, it's a very simple movie. I mean, it's, it, it, it does the same kind of plot point as we've done before. It, it's a heavily focused child friendly movie starring children. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it does the same trope before where, two little boys like get on a a ship of some sort they shouldn't have and then they go on a wacky adventure yeah and and don't forget to mention that one of them happens to be white too Uh, oh well first we had jim now we have tom yeah tom yes that's an american name good (laughs) yeah um um i I was just gonna so since you brought him up uh his name is actually uh, christopher murphy mm -hmm. and same deal as the other one. They weren't more so looking for like a kid that could act because the amount of white children in America during the 1960s was very low, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they had to go to a military base, uh, an Amer- American military base and a, a school. And they're like, they found the kid that could speak the most Japanese, which was this kid, Christopher Murphy. So he got the part and it was within wow. about 30 minutes of <laughs> doing that that they they did that whole process that's crazy and and you can tell um (laughs) christopher murphy is horrible (laughs) he's just a dead stare just like says his lines like actually honestly both the kids are kind of rough in this movie yeah it's uh you know it when you do a movie like this with children um Mm -hmm. you're pretty much just like 
you're you get what you can get i mean yeah they're, and especially with because the whole reason why they went with having a white child in this movie is the same reason why they did um before which is uh the american um, distributor at the time aip mm -hmm. american international pictures that when they picked up this movie that was their kind of their mandate is that you need to put a a white kid in this movie because <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be more accessible to us americans over here okay. so that wasn't necessarily like oh well you know it would be more interesting to the plot because there's really no reason why uh i mean like before it was like okay jim and and his friend were like you know boy scouts and it's like this big international boy scout jamboree or whatever so mm -hmm. it's like it makes a little sense and it's just like oh no it's akio and his friend tom they just they're friends yeah it, yeah they're just buddies they just hang out yeah so i mean i don't want to get too deep into like my feelings on this movie but it's like this movie's like a weird mix of the last one um it, it's kind of doing the same thing again and there's things that i like better about this one and then there's things i like less it's kind of like equal measures there is one thing a lot less stock footage in this one there's a little bit yeah. used. it's not egregious though I was gonna say that it's there. The the last movie it was heavily padded with stock footage, and it was to the degree that it it took away from both of our enjoyment of it. Mm -hmm. And but I will say this one it does have stock footage, but it is very it's much shorter, so it's 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 passable. I'll say that. Yeah. Oh yeah. It it's really yeah. not, it didn't upset me like. I mean, at the, this point, watching all of these monster movies, I'm like, just a little bit of stock footage. That's just kind of what they did. You know, they yeah. just always did that. Which that's kind of what we mentioned in, when we did our Godzilla series. So when Godzilla's Revenge, I mean, that movie, half that movie is pretty much stock footage. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it is. Uh, that was and that was Toho, like kind of applauding gamera's you know method of like oh you know we can just use stock footage and you know we can use the same moves we made and we don't have to make any new footage like let's just do that and, you know yeah uh but yeah this one it's it's a lot a lot less egregious but um how this movie opens though is there's strange signals coming out from outer space and they're wondering where all these strange signals are coming from and then the next day, Akio and his friend Tom are uh, out riding their bikes, mm -hmm. and they they happen to come across a photograph of a spaceship. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and don't forget the little his little sister that tags along with them too. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's that, that that was one thing they did. They, it, it's a matte painting of a spaceship. Oh and yes, of course. And, yeah, and it's like very clearly like they did not have the budget to make a scale size spaceship so it's just or even a green screen it's like very it's like just a photo yeah because they have that one shot because the the little sister is just standing there watching and all they do is like pan the camera up and it and it looks horrible as she watches the, the ship move up and you're right this is how the movie opens because like there's they hear about the waves they look at a telescope and go to the forest and they're already kidnapped by aliens. Yeah. And I mean, well, we don't know they're kidnapped by aliens because they just, they, they just jump yeah, into true. like a spaceship and they just start hitting some buttons and then they immediately take off to outer space and they're just like, Oh no, we're going to outer space. So, mm -hmm. um, and you know, as we know from the previous one, Gamera, he's a friend to all the children. He's, he's got his finger on the pulse of, uh, <laughs> children's and how, what their needs are for being mm -hmm. saved and everything so mm -hmm. at, camera flies into outer space just to save these two little boys like he is yes yeah like <laughs> he's there i mean like he is like i am not losing one single life here these children's lives are way <laughs> too important here uh but i I do like Gamera in this movie. I mean, he's... Me too, yeah. Gamera's <laughs> yeah, he, awesome. <laughs> he's, you know, he's a nice, friendly superhero type character. You know, he cares deeply for the children. Um, mm -hmm. he's, no, uh, <laughs> I don't know it, what it is. It's kind of it, it's kind of sweet. No, it's endearing. It is. It's really <laughs> nice. I don't know whenever the spaceship's going and Gamera's just flying next to him and the kids are like, oh, Gamera wants to race. And it has like the Gamera theme playing. It's uh -huh. like really cute i don't know i i like camera he's a likable yeah. character 
there's like a meteor, an asteroid that's headed towards the ship, and he busts it and gets it, you know, knocks mm-hmm. it out of the way so it doesn't hit the kids. Yeah, he busts his head through it. Like, he's yeah. a strong dude. But, uh, no, like, and that, but that does knock him away, and he ends up getting caught in outer space. And so that kind of takes him out of the movie for a little bit. But, uh, the, uh, when they do land, you know, they do land on an alien, uh, home planet, and, uh, they do, it, it's totally safe to breathe they're just like oh yeah we don't need we don't need space helmets we can breathe there's oxygen here yeah, easy you don't <laughs> have to buy costumes yeah don't have to do any space costumes for these mm-hmm. kids um <laughs> but uh we do see uh a very familiar face and that is uh gauss but not not the original gauss we see space gauss yeah he's like silver now <laughs> yeah but so uh okay uh source this time i did listen to the audio commentary for this one you researched the movie i did wow and it's uh researched it's uh the audio commentary was actually done by david callett from uh from <laughs> wow, the, david the callett shows up awesome <laughs> <laughs> and i i will say that the one thing i don't like about some of these audio commentaries which i'm not going to say his is his is bad it's not bad i liked it but the problem is they tell the same stories over and over mm. and over again. Like they go into like the whole like biography of Yuasa. Oh. And I'm like, I've, I've, I've heard this like for the last four movies pretty yeah. much. And, and you know, I, I was kind of wanting some more in-depth information on like this movie and everything. And, you know, he does have like a lot of good points about, you know, with a lot of the same accessibilities that he said, like in our Godzilla series, where he kind of went on this really passionate, like, like, you know, we do need English dubs because that's what makes them accessible to kids. Like, you know, yeah, subs are not the end all be all type of thing, which, you know, like I said, it's, I, I don't, if I had never heard any of that before, I would have liked it, but it's like, okay, I have heard, you say like this passion. before yeah yeah so I, I i don't deny you have passion but i was kind of wanting some more information about this movie specifically and yeah uh instead of a broad overview but there is some they uh one is they did originally have a, a monster coming in like a new monster that was going to be showing up to for this part but instead they're like oh that would cost money so let's just break out the old space the, the old gauss costume and just paint <laughs> it silver Yep, sounds about right. And yeah, I mean, and but they still call him Gauss, though. So it's not they, like they're they trying him, to pass him off. Right. They do say like, oh, it's Gauss. They're like, oh, but no, it's a different species of Gauss. And <laughs> yeah, because he's silver. Uh, but yeah, they they it comes out. And then the uh, the big monster of this movie is Giron. And uh, Giron is basically a walking knife. I mean, I just, yeah, it's uh, not even he's like he, he he's like crouched like he's like dragging his back legs and like uh, crawls on the ground almost. But he's yeah, really fast. If, yeah. And he got incredible jumping ability, too. Um, yeah. It, it, just imagine if Jason's machete came to life. That's what this is. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but they, the scene we see right here it's incredibly violent and it's like Uh, this movie's for kids man i don't know i like people like you can say that but like i if my like six-year-old is sitting there watching gauss get chopped up the way he does i'd be like no i'm turning this off my kid doesn't need to see this it's 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 so violent i mean like the way like it's not like he just gets chopped off it's like sadistically chopped off it's like yeah he gets like a because Gauss does his little laser beam and it reflects off of Buron's blade, mm-hmm. jumps, and then Gauss's leg gets cut off. So then Gauss flies away. And then Giron jumps up into the air and chops off Gauss's wing. Which Gauss is a falls crazy on... scene. <laughs> just... Yeah, because he, he just, incredible, like, jump that he does. Yeah. And chops it off. Gauss is flopping on the ground in pain. Gets his other wing chopped off. He's screaming at this point, and it's like, then he beheads him, and then just starts chopping yeah. him up like you know, like a like a steak. Yeah, and a close up of Giaus's head flying and hitting the ground, and his eyes closing with like it's not red blood, it's blue blood, but still, it's like 
I can't believe they thought it was okay to put this in this movie, but yeah. it makes it memorable. <laughs> it does. And that's one thing that was cut out of the American version. Was Good. This scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, I think it just shows like him, like, I, I don't even know if that shows like the gal scene. I haven't seen the American one, but um, yeah, they didn't include but, that on the Blu-ray release. No, they didn't. But like I said, if you want, they the Mystery Science Theater episode is on YouTube, I believe, if you really want to see what the American one's like. But gotcha. um, it, yeah, that that just kind of gives you a taste of like the monster that they, that we're dealing with. Um, but uh, what we do see is uh, the kids like end up going down and meeting with these two female aliens Mm -hmm. and you know they kind of do like the whole like oh you know we're so friendly you know we're just here for world peace you know we want earth to help us out because we're Mm -hmm. really in big need but turns out instead you know they want to eat these kids brains pretty much yeah that's what they say they want to eat their brains also i we're here that kid his wish for the world is to have no war and no more traffic accidents. <laughs> That's his stance, which I think. And he's like, we can change the world if we end war and we end traffic accidents, which I think is funny. Which they do mention that too, the, the traffic accident thing. Because that is like a, a really odd thing to say. But that's because, again, that's more of like a current events type of thing. Because okay. uh, more cars had been produced in Japan. And because of that, more traffic accidents, you know, more people driving, more mm-hmm. traffic accidents a year. So I guess traffic accidents at that time of the year was like at an all time high. So they were that making was kind a of like, stance. it was an epidemic of car accidents. <laughs> yeah. So it's very, uh, very silly type of thing, but um, they do like the whole bit before, like they, 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 we've seen it in other movies, like kind of like monster zero where, you know, it's like, oh, we're good aliens, and but instead, it's like they're really trying to take over the world or and you know mm-hmm. eat these kids' brains. Um, and they do the same bits they did before, like in Beerus, um, the kids were you know running around the spaceship, like getting into mischief mm-hmm. type of thing, and that's kind of what they do in this one too. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's kind of weird. It's like the same movie in a way because even the aliens, like we're tricked into like, oh, they're, they're not that bad and then they're oh no they're really bad um when they even do the same uh alien bit too like their eyes flashing and everything like they did in the last movie exactly and i think that's like where that hand the toss off is because i think this alien stuff is better in the last one i I just think maybe the kids are a little more likable and i like the mystery of the aliens but i will say the monster stuff in this movie i think is better just because gear on is an absolutely insane monster. Um, and here's the thing. I think the alien ladies, I think there's something good there. I like them. I think they're a good role. Um, just maybe needed. I don't even know what it needed. It just needed to be a little more interesting. Maybe not a repeat. It's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard when it, it back to back movies like this, they do like alien invasion plot. So, yeah. um, but I will say at least they do something a little different and they actually go to the alien planet this time. So, That's true. It, so it, they do some, they do try it out. Now, whether that was the case where they could just film like on a set and they wouldn't have to film like <laughs> outside, you know, who knows, but you know, I, cause I think that was probably the case. It's like, okay, we can just film this movie entirely on a set. We don't have to go outside hardly. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was a set from a different movie. It probably would as, um, because i mean the only thing we have to go off of like uh like the only earth scenes are like the little sisters like trying to convince her parents that her brother and friend were abducted by aliens <laughs> and they're like oh you and your tall tales like she keeps going on about space aliens like you know kids yeah. these days right and- oh, they're so stu- yeah and it's the two moms that like have to hear about this but the white mom is she's a little more convinced about it she she's yeah. like huh okay maybe something's up um so yeah and then there's a wacky police officer who mm-hmm. like came off as like a uh like someone that may be a little more famous in japan and it was kind of he a, is he is okay yeah because he seemed like Oh, we got a personality in this movie, but I, of course, I don't know who that is. Well, yeah, that's uh, Kanomura, mm-hmm. and that's pretty much like he would. That was like his whole like 
bit is like he would show up in movies like that or he's like oh we need somebody that acts like a wacky policeman or a wacky so and so he was mm-hmm. they compared him to like a japanese don Knotts. it's like you, gotcha. you really want some, you want like a really over the top comedic actor because you know like david callett had said in the uh commentary it's like you know you don't hire don Knotts to be like a serious actor you know you hire him because you want don Knotts in your movie that's true yeah um so that's that was just kind of like the that was like the reason why but they're, they're they do have like a little like weird bit where like tom shoots like like a dart that's like tom's thing is like he's like a marksman with a dart gun and he's like yeah. able to to lift up a piece of like a jacket off of a bike and onto the wall from like that's how good his darts are <laughs> yeah that scene is just silly that one's like way early where they're where um they're trying to dodge the cop on their bikes and it it's like that ah, we gotta be fast go 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 but they're not going fast and they just end up getting caught anyway by the cop yeah and the cop's like hey no two kids running on the same bicycle there and it's just or he's yeah. like I'm, we said or or i'm gonna shave your head foreshadowing god can you believe this movie has such great foreshadowing because yes the one of the kids does get their head shaved off. And I felt kind yeah. of bad for that kid because it looked like they really shaved his head for this movie. I'm I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, they didn't yeah. they don't they didn't say anything specifically about it, but you know, they did say like that that's probably like one of like the more memorable scenes because it's probably like the most disturbing thing in the movie. Yeah, because yeah, because they <laughs> the alien ladies have like a it's almost like an exacto knife like a, a inspector gadget type deal where their guns can do anything and their gun looks like a like a hair clipper yeah well i mean and and also too it's like they have him like in this like fishbowl mm-hmm. kind of looking thing but it's like only his scalp is sticking out so it's like they're just specifically they're like okay i'm gonna shave his head and they're like okay now crack open his skull and we're going to dig into those brains he's got. And then it's like, mm-hmm. whoops, no, no, not time for that. You know, they get interrupted because Gamera shows up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I like that they don't know. I felt it feels like all the villains before, like they know who Gamera is, or at least in the last movie. But this one, they're like, who the hell is Gamera? <laughs> like they have yeah. to learn from the little boy who Gamera is. Well, they did that in uh, the last one, too, because that's, okay. oh, that's right. They had to get the that's, stock that's, footage. That's, that's where the stock footage came from. They're like, we yeah. that perfect. So I'm a, now I'm just gonna assume the next movie there's gonna be some other villain like who's Gamera, and then they have to show him like stuff from this movie, probably. But yeah, probably uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, Gamera does show up, and he uh, they do put on a, a, a little mini showdown at first because Gamera lands, and then immediately right away, Giron's like hacking at Gamera's shell and Gamera's shell starts to bleed green blood and mm-hmm. everything and they they do get into like a little tussle uh and you know Gamera does get a little bit of an advantage on him um mm-hmm. but one trick we hadn't seen earlier is that Giron could shoot ninja stars out of his blade <laughs> yeah it's not just a knife head he has to have he has to have ninja stars too and that scene it's like one thing i do appreciate about these gamma movies is like i because godzilla like whenever he'd get hit or things like that you know he would just like get right back up or like mm-hmm. you know this one it's like when anyone like any of these monsters get hurt like they actually show like the monsters in pain like how like so gamma gets two ninja stars to his face like right in his cheeks pretty mm-hmm. much and he, he's able to pull them out and then he uses like clubs to like bat them, bat the ninja stars back. And then he picks up like snow or ice or something. And he yeah. like puts it to his cheeks. Like, and he's like, ah, like, just, it's, yeah, like, like using... it's like real slice marks. Like you can see it like under his eyes. It's like wild. And yeah, it's like he's in pain because I, I always, I actually was reminded in this movie of that great scene with Gauss from a few movies ago where he, he stubs his toe and he's like, oh. there's that, yeah, I, there's that moment in this, the lots of moments of like that in this movie. Yeah, there's, but that's like, he gets that and uh, jumping ahead, they, when they do have another showdown, like camera gets like, he gets a ninja starred in the arms and legs this time. Mm-hmm. And, 
And Gamera starts like dancing, like ah, like shaking his <laughs> arms and legs. And then Tom is like, "Oh, look, he's doing the go-go dance." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very very goofy scene. But yeah, it's because he's in pain, and the only way Gamera could like heal himself is when he goes underwater. So that's mm-hmm. that's how they that's how they get rid of Gamera for the for another bit of the movie. Is like after he's been like hurt real bad, he has to go chill out underwater. Mm-hmm. yeah and uh so so we get no gamma for a little bit we get a little more human plot yay more alien plot yeah more tom uh, yeah but there is like that funny bit i i forget where quite where it lands but of like uh the two sisters one of them gets hurt and the other one's like we can't have we kill all of our yeah. weaklings and it just shoots her sister um yeah that one's funny and then there's a scene too like where the kids are like locked up in like this tube or cage looking thing mm-hmm. and like there's blocks that falls like directly on the kid's head it's, and it's like it's like i think those are supposed to be like cement or something but it <laughs> fell directly on his head yes i know and i'm like <laughs> and uh oh and like after he gets his head shaved like the tom he's like he's like what am i gonna do about my head and tom's like here take my hat yep and he wears tom's hat for the rest of the movie and it looks really w- weird yeah um but i mean the main event of this movie is is the monster fights i mean like because like the human plot points like i said like on back on earth it's just them trying to figure out like what happened to their kids and where mm-hmm. are they um and a little girl was trying to convince them of this and um and then like you said it's them trying to outsmart the aliens and try to get them out of their out of their clutches mm-hmm. um but we do get back to like more of the fighting with Gamera and Giron where like uh, Gamera does get the advantage of him at some point And he does like, like, like just sits on Giron. Like he like jumps up into the air as high as he can and does like a bonsai drop, like on his butt, like mm-hmm. just sits on him and he like jumps up and keeps doing it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, like, it's so silly. Well, there's that whole bit where like um where Gamera's just hopping on his back too. There's some, there's just some really great stuff like the fight the monster stuff like you said is like the star of the show because there, there's just silly stuff like that going on there's even the scene where like they're underwater and they zoom out of the water um i don't know it looks a little cheap but like that's kind of the charm of gamera movies no it's it's cheap but i mean it's like they're trying in this one at least yeah. like they're like they are really trying to like okay like we may not have a lot here but we're gonna make it work and yeah. Oh, we have to bring up Gamera doing gymnastics. <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's that was like the other bit. So like Gamera flies into the air mm-hmm. and and uh Giron like comes in and like ricochets off his back with the knife. Mm-hmm. And that causes Gamera to fly over to a perfectly uh handlebar, like hanging bar right there. And Gamera does, like you said, gymnastics. He does yeah, he like spins around and then he stops in the air. And then he spins around the other way. <laughs> Just imagine, like you know, like that toy monkey or whatever. Like you'd squeeze mm-hmm. it and it, it would flip or whatever. Like it'd mm-hmm. do like gymnastics. That's what pretty much this is. It's just like imagine, like you just see like a little character like just spinning like on there. Yeah, it's it's real. It's great stuff. I've actually when I saw it, I was like, oh, I've seen this before. Like I think people use that as like a gif at places. Uh, that's probably like the most famous thing I've seen from Gamera because everywhere I've seen people that, you know, have no idea what Gamera is and they'll, they'll put that gift of this scene in there mm-hmm. or whatever. So yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Um, I, yeah, I had a great time watching like the fights of it because it, it does in a pretty uh, spectacular way because mm-hmm. they do, there was like another rocket, which they were going to fire to earth. Um, and it was going to, you know, help take out earth, but, uh, apparently there's a hole in between the knife blade of Giron's nose so like mm. <laughs> there's a what happens is like a gamera like freaking like pile drives Giron into the ground where it's like Giron's just like sticking upside down like uh, uh-huh. <laughs> and, and and while he's doing that he gamera grabs the rocket and shoves it in between the two nose <laughs> and like someone with and, a nose ring <laughs> yeah exactly like they just put like a post right through his face and then just mm-hmm. 
and and Giron blows up and blows up in half. And that's that's how he dies. It's fantastic. It's good stuff. And I I still I don't think negatively of Gamera. I thought he had to do it, and he looked cool while doing it. He wasn't wearing sunglasses, but I I still think he was cool. I think he could have rocked some sunglasses. I wish they would get some sunglasses <laughs> on him. <laughs> well, you know, it was the sixties. You know, it's. It, I mean, then it was like you're like a really bad guy if you were gay before sunglasses. That's true. But he had bloodshot eyes. Maybe it's a, it would be a good way to cover those up. That's the thing I like about the other. Like air, all these monsters look so tired. They I just know. Look, <laughs> all their eyes. They just they are all yellow and they all have the red veiny eyes. I don't know and why like, they do that. <laughs> It's just like, let, let them take a nap already, please. No, they have to, because that's how they do this, right? They film actual monsters just doing their thing. Um, yeah, they just, yeah, they just work them to death. That sounds about right. Hopefully the suit actors got a better time this time in, in this movie. Well, they didn't even mention, that's the other thing too. Like they never, he never mentioned the suit actors or anything like that. Like I said, that was one thing I was kind of disappointed by the commentary. Is like mm -hmm. I was wanting a little more specific information regarding this one um you know he did go into like a little bit about like i said you know like the actors in the movie itself but like as far as like the production of this movie it i was wanting a little more out of that but still you know it was it wasn't bad um mm -hmm. the uh but yeah how the movie ends is like they get onto they get back onto the spaceship and then gamera flies them home and you know like i said like the, earlier they were like oh i'm gonna shave your head if you don't do it and so when he shows up with a shaved head the police officer's like oh wow like did you shave your head in atonement because he that's like because <laughs> that's what like uh, that's what they do in japan a lot of times like like people who do bad stuff like <laughs> shave their oh head, yeah like, and, and it, like an atonement for it mm -hmm. it's a it's a really uh you know japan's like a real for you know asking for forgiveness type of culture really guilt-ridden nation <laughs> so yeah the thing too is like so the movie ends like they they they, they arrive back on the spaceship like the, all their friends and family are waiting for them like mm -hmm. oh they made it back and then they get off the spaceship and then they're explaining what happened like oh yeah you know there's these weird women they you know they did it and camera say and then they're like they're still like what a uh... wild story like yeah like i don't know about that like did after they fly them, in yeah, after they fly in on a spaceship like that you know, you're gonna start questioning things you kids are crazy you stupid kids i believe yeah. everything those kids would have to say yeah i'd be like okay mm -hmm. spaceships are real aliens are real please and well that's the other thing too so like the, the kid he he's aware of gamma like and gamma's you know aware of doing all this stuff so it's like so that means like all the other movies are canon up to this point and that means Beerus, you know, like him, him with him and his spaceship and the aliens, like that should be like worldwide news at this point. And it's like people are still having a hard time believing in aliens. Well, anything that happens with Gamera, it's only for kids. Only kids remember once you turn 18, you forget about it or you forget about it the day after if you're an adult. Just the way it I, goes. That's true, I guess. So they do say like they do want the smartest characters in this movie to be the kids. So that's probably yeah, true, actually, on some probably. level. But, but um, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much where the movie ends. I mean, they go like, you know, they have a big celebration in Gamera, you know, he saved the day. He, he did a good job. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I agree. I think so. And it ends with a nice, happy ending. Um, you get to see Gamera fly away. I don't know. It, it's a, uh, I think overall, it's a, it's a fun entry. I, 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 I don't love it. I, it's definitely not as good as some of the past ones. Um, But I do, it's weird. I've been having a toss up. I do think it's better than the last one and i think that's just because i didn't have to watch as much stock footage even if the kids are worse and also the monsters are cool i like that bit too i definitely think it's better than gamma mm -hmm. versus virus um and it's probably my third favorite of the bunch really so, so wow. um it's i had a good time watching it i mean mm -hmm. it, the monster stuff is pretty top tier in my mind it, it, it looks cheap don't get me wrong but i will say like the like the look of it, it's like exactly what I wanted in a movie like this. Mm -hmm. So it's, I was not disappointed. So I, 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 I enjoyed it. Um, but uh, do you want to know what the English title of this movie is? Cause this movie wasn't released in theaters in America. It was one of course, released, uh, right. Direct to TV. 
Uh, Do you yeah, know what the American name was? It get get a little of this original name, Attack of the Monsters. Whoa! Oh my God! I'm gonna have to watch that. <laughs> Sounds like they're just trying to be like, oh, I'm clicking to the TV. I see Attack All Monsters. I'm like, oh yeah, Godzilla. Cool. Oh, I mean, it, yeah, it's like Attack of the Monsters, Attack of the Volcano Monsters, Fire. You know, it's like a, it's so boring. They can't yeah. think of anything when they bring these movies over. Like, imagine if that was, like, their actual name. Like, how confused would you be? Like, if, like, yeah. if that was, like, their actual, like, name of, like, what it translated to, like, how like how many movies do you think would sound just yeah. like that? would be awful. It, it's so weird because we talk, we've talked about this before, but, like, being a movie fan pre-internet sounds so difficult because, like, imagine growing up loving monster movies and you only know them by, like, the worst titles possible. And it probably was a pain to figure out what was what. Because they all had these garbage names. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't imagine. But, um, I, like I said, for me and my money, I would give this movie a recommend. Wow. You know what? I'll give it a recommend, too. Uh, I'd give it a light recommend. Yeah. So, mm. it's had a good time watching it. Um. Like I said, we're trying to die is getting kind of close to looming for bankruptcy at this point. Um, they are going to be filing for bankruptcy very soon oh, at okay. this point. And I do have some information about the bankruptcy thing, but I do was going to kind of say that when it actually happened. So, but we're right there. So don't you worry. Okay. We're almost there um, on the next one, <laughs> the next round. Uh, is it? Um... <laughs> I think there's uh, two more Gamera movies, right? Three yeah, more? so so no, there's three more in the Showa era. Okay, got you. But that one one is much later than the other two. But anyway, we'll get into that later. But okay, yeah. But that's gonna do it for Bond Murder Week. Uh, had a blast. Both yeah. movies, both really over the top movies this week. So it's, uh, it's it true. was definitely definitely wasn't a boring week. So. No. <laughs> but speaking of boring weeks, we're gonna. Nathan, we're be watching <laughs> next time. What the hell are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan. On Tuesday, we are going to be talking about Phase Four, which is uh, Marvel. I love Marvel movies. <laughs> yes, yes, I love Phase Four. We we have to watch all of Phase Four. Uh, no, we're talking about the 1974 Ant movie, and that's on the Criterion Channel. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to watch that one. Ryan, what are we going to be talking about on Thursday? Well, Nathan, we are going to be talking about... You know what? I, I, Nobody loves Xbox games more than me, Nathan. <laughs> I know. And I know I, you love uh, Xbox. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite uh xbox games that it made me love the xbox and we're actually going to be talking about the video game at the movie adaptation of the video game dead or alive yes okay cool i was hoping you brought it up and i, I was like we gotta watch it so yes nathan we're gonna be watching uh 2006 doa colon dead or alive that's right and that one that one is on tubi for free as well if you have any thoughts and opinions about our podcast email us over at drive and double feature podcast at gmail.com don't forget to follow us on x at didf pod and once again check out the patreon at patreon.com slash drive and double feature podcast but until next time until next time